Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Best of Three, presented by the Daily Dot Shot right out of our Austin, Texas studios, live for your FGC enjoyment. I'm Fran Salinas. This is Michael Donka Schiller. You might have seen him on a Texas Showdown stream not too not long ago. Not if you ago. watch Sunday. Well, I guess not on the player station if you watch Sunday. <laughs> but uh, I see you're still keeping that... Uh, Spirit alive with the shirt. Yeah, you know what? I mean, we're in between two Texas majors. I figured I had to pull it out. Tonight on the show, we have none other than Julio Fuentes himself. And you too, stream audience, can reenact that fateful, fateful moment from Grand Finals by calling in when he comes in later. Uh, but first on the show, how about we introduce our good friends. Join us every week. That would be Steve Ace King Offsuit, writer for the Daily Dot esports section. Hey, buddy. Hey, two guns. What's up? And none other than uh, John Velociraptor Guerrero from Event Hubs. Single gun, right at you. That's pretty menacing, John. <laughs> I try. All right, guys. Then on the show, we're going to talk a couple of things. Of course, we'll have Julio later, but man, what a packed weekend. We had Red Bull Kumute. We had the PAX uh, uh, Invitational. We, of course, had Texas Showdown, as Donka is reminding everyone by wearing that shirt, which is not from Chile. So why don't we get, go ahead and get started with Red Bull Kumite. I unfortunately did not get to see any of it because we were at Texas Showdown. So I'm going to take, uh, hand it over to my good friend, John Velociraptor Guerrero, who wrote, who watched it all and wrote a very nice write-up about it. Yeah, yeah uh, Red Bull Kumite. So we've seen it, we saw it last year and that was, um, that was spectacular in and of itself. And it's very obviously Red Bull, a corporation that has plenty of money behind it. They can do it up big and they do. So this event, um, obviously it had a collection of the best players from all around the world. So we were already going to get amazing top-level play, and we did, and it was great. But the event itself was, was run unlike any other I think I've ever seen before. You got the, the octagon, I remember maybe it was a hexagon, but you got the cage match feel. You've got ring entrances. You've got constant action. They had these uh, combo exhibitions, and they had an all-star battle. It was a spectator's event, unlike any other event that I think we've seen um, in the FGC. And uh, I just really wanted to give a tip of the hat to the Red Bull guys for putting on such a production for the FGC. Uh, it, it, like I said, from the play to the production, everything was amazing. It, it ran incredibly smoothly, and I think it was a very successful event um, in the realm of, of esports. And it shows us how we, as the FGC, are transitioning more towards the esports side of things. I mean, that's an interesting thing you bring up. Uh, we saw Justin Wong was tweeting about this is the greatest event I've ever been to. Basically, he stopped short of saying that. Uh, Evo just announced that they have over four thousand entrants. For for the open brackets, do you think the pro players will ever like are gonna not want to go to these tournaments, the the traditional tournament, when you have these swanky ass Red Bull style invitationals or the PAX invitationals where you get to chill, they pamper you, and you play a little bit, and you don't have to really worry about much else. Well, I mean, if you're asking me, I think it'll end up being kind of a a circuit, sort of like other esports have at this point, where. And I think Evo is the exception to that. I think Evo will exist and it will be an open tournament and people will enter it as long as that is humanly possible. But I think at some point, yes, top players are going to go to invitational tournaments. And then, you know, to get into the A-League and get invited to those invitational tournaments, you'll be in the open brackets. And eventually there will be like promotions and demotions and stuff like that. I think that's a little while off, but I think in the next couple of years it's a possibility we'll start seeing that. And I mean, Topanga already had that in its own right. So... That could easily go to a more global level. But, but you know, what I'm interested in is, like, the splintering of what's traditional. You have the th shows like Crash, which is not new, but, you know, it's gaining popularity. You have this Rebel Kumite, which clearly exceeded all expectations. And even though it was, uh, we had seen a similar version of it last year, it definitely, uh, you know, upped their game this year. Is that a concern? Is that a good thing? Is that, does that mean that it's more accessible for an audience, which in turn grows the scene? I mean, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how that's going to shape, shape up. Steve, what do you think? I'm thinking that really, you know, we're seeing with the growth of interest in fighting games, there's room for both. Uh, there's certainly more tournaments that people care about, but there is more room for more of these spectator events. So I don't think it's necessarily going to be an either or proposition. Um, I think really it's going to be calendar space that's 
the big limiter. I mean, you look at this weekend, you had not only Red Bull Kumite, not only Street Fighter Crash, but you also had PAX Arena as an invitational, and you had two big, uh, well, two CPT events, Texas Showdown and uh, Frog Bite out in Italy. So you really had, you really saw people have to pick and choose. Do you want to go with the money, the guaranteed money, you know, the bigger prize pools of the Invitational? Or do you think long term uh, in terms of making the Capcom Pro Tour uh, for the CPT events? I think that's really going to be uh, the interesting decision you see these players make if we have more uh, more of these showcase, more of these uh, Invitational events in the future. And, and I, it's interesting you bring up making the CPT because I think... Well, everyone knows how important it is. Like the CPT is everything. Kaoma has been getting into invited to these events almost solely because he went to the CPT and his performance there. And he's not the only player with that, you know, that pedigree on him. So traveling around and being in all these invitationals is great, but if you don't earn your spot in the Pro Tour, you might not get back next year. Mm-hmm. But but let me draw another comparison here for you guys. Uh th- there was some flack about Texas Showdown about the way it was run, this, that, and the other, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, people were talking smack about Frogbite. Am I pronouncing that right? Is it Frogbite, <laughs> the one in Italy? Or Fragbite, yeah. Steve? Um, people were saying, how's that even a major? They only had like 60 entrants or slightly under. Um, I was talking to Sejam. We had a chance to meet him and talk to him. And he was telling me, I, Danka and Sejam did probably eight plus hours a piece every day of commentating. And they got paid for it. Sejan was telling me that he went to these uh, Wizard World events that you see uh, him and Gutex and other guys are on that circuit. He did about three hours of commentary over three days. And I I won't mention uh, anything other than that, but the point is, it's not just the players, but it's the whole industry wrapping around. It's like, what is more convenient for me? What would I rather do? What got more return for its buck? Texas Showdown, which was an exciting tournament, or a Red Bull Kumite that had the invitationals? John. Well... I want to I want to make sure that I touch on this before we go too far away. But um, as as a spectator, it's not fair to compare the most majors, like like final round, like CEO and such, to Red Bull Kumite. That's it's almost apples and oranges in some ways because Red Bull Kumite, you're dealing with 16 guys. Um, you you have all of this corporate backing and such, and it is an absolutely a very entertaining event. Uh, and it was made with the spectators in mind, and and they have the resources to facilitate that. All these other majors, they're more so, they're primarily for the players, and so you're not going to be able to to do a lot of the things, at least not with bajillions of dollars, you know, to to facilitate all of these these people that you're going to have there, um, and. and the, the, the way that these huge tournaments run, you're not going to be able to make the same experience happen for a, for a multi-hundred person tournament. So it's not fair for people to jump to any conclusions and say, why aren't our regular tournaments more like Red Bull Kumite? I'm not saying people necessarily would, but I can see that happen, and I don't want to go into that realm. So just kind of a warning, a, a word of caution there. But as far as uh, what was your <laughs> your question exactly? It's something with the financial... Well, it's more that- about how... Uh... I, I didn't speak to Justin Wong, but he was, from reading his tweets, he was like, wow, this is the oh. greatest event I've ever been to. Uh, again, I'm not trying to put words in Sejam's mouth either. Uh, Steve Lyons, who does the uh, Wednesday Night Fights commentary and did commentary at Texas Showdown for many games. Um, but he made it seem like it's a way sweeter gig to do this Wizard World Comic Con uh, circuit than to do... Now, it didn't sound like he was complaining about all the commentary he did at Texas Showdown, but it was a lot of commentary. You too, man. I mean, you guys did like eight-hour shifts. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I felt like that was probably a lot of work. I mean, you're just talking no, about video games. You're talking <laughs> about video games, but you're sitting there and you're working for eight hours straight. <laughs> no, anyway, definitely. yeah, you were saying, that, John. That, that's a very, very valid point. And like Danka said, I, I don't think that we're going to have to make like a decision very, very soon. But if things continue to, to grow towards the esportsy side of things, that is potentially a threat to these more, I guess we'll say if we're saying esports and the other side of the spectrum is grassroots, that's kind of a threat to a lot of the things that the grassroots tournaments offer because, yeah, it's going to be more more work, more hours, uh, uh, less pampering, um, 
I mean, if, if we grow and it becomes more, I guess, corporate, you're going to have a lot more uh, luxuries. And of course, people are going to want the more comfortable setting and, and the easier the easier experience. So th that's a very, very valid question. And only time will tell as to how quickly those kind of events continue to rise up. If, if the entire direction of the tournament scene changes in that in that way, uh, that that's very possibly it's very possible that that could happen and it could happen fairly soon um, and and that'll be a huge change in the in the entirety of the FGC we won't see tournaments like we do nowadays it'll be maybe a mixture of both and maybe eventually just those you know but um, yeah like I say a very valid point something people should be talking about right now the Red Bull Kumite the little I've seen of it was a fantastic event the entirety all those all those replays are up on the YouTube channel so definitely go and check those out uh, what you're seeing on the screen now is from the very first match of the Kumite uh, definitely check that out there's also a lot of other cool stuff like the combo competition was that that was a very novel idea and very entertaining and to have the uh, the pros there uh, judging them with the number <laughs> cards that, that that was just a great idea and shout outs to them but you bring up this whole esports thing and I wanted to take a side Let's move away from Red Bull Kumite. If you want to know more about it, you can read John's uh, extensive breakdown of why it was such a good event on Event Hubs. But uh, moving away a little bit from Red Bull Kumite and talking a little bit more about esports, got a little bit of an update here. Team YP, why don't you take it away, Steve? All right. Well, not a great week for Team. Uh, not a great week for Team YP. Uh, not only did Valmaster struggle at Red Bull Kumite, but earlier in the week. Uh, ESL, who runs uh, the MKX Pro League along with uh, other competitions, they said that they are banning teams that are sponsored by teams that are that are uh, excuse me by companies that are uh, in the business of adult materials and other adult things. So specifically targeting Team YP at this point. Um, I don't think uh, Pornhub has an esports team just yet. <laughs> I could be wrong on that. <laughs> Team PH. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but here you see again this balancing act that Team YP has tried to maintain, you know, trying to maintain ties with the the U-Porn side, you know, using the same colors, using the same font for their logo, um, and being safe for work enough so that they can say that their own, their own identity. You're seeing a lot of companies step up and say no that's not okay um obviously we've had the issues with uh valmaster not being able to use exactly his i'm glad you brought that up on capcom pro tour events so that is something that we're it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in the future okay so this is a theory here and it's a pretty obvious one right it's not like i'm connecting just random straight dots here but team yp first of all in the fgc there are no MKX Team YP members, so the ESL tournaments, no effect. Uh, we, as you mentioned, Capcom did have some issues in a couple of start stops. Do we use the tag or not? It seems to me, and I could be wrong, that ESL wants to clean up their image, but why? Why? Because a lot of people who might want to advertise or sponsor or come into the scene don't want to be associated with that. So it's like, oh, really? You guys don't want to throw money our way? Let's get the hell rid of Team YP so that we can make that happen. Will that actually roll out is that a harbinger of what we're about to head and get real esports up in here or not we'll have to wait and see uh unless anybody has a thought i'm gonna move on to our second esports update of the of the show i think that really it's it's a tough position for team yp because you know it's right all of us watching are adults we don't care we're not going to cause the issue and it annoys us when we see a company that wants to come in uh, sponsor players send them out to events, not get the support that they want. The issue, though, is are we going to make a bigger stink or is J little Jimmy's mom, uh, who's watch who runs by watching her son wa uh, look at uh, Capcom Pro Tour event, see the, the Team YP logo and make a stink on Facebook saying that uh, porn companies are sponsoring Street Fighter events? That's going to be the bigger issue. It's less likely to happen, but the fallout is just so much greater that they have to avoid it. You know, uh, you did. I don't know if you guys saw that uh, Mr. Wizard tweeted out saying, Team YP, you are welcome at Evo. Come on down. Um, so there you go. There Maybe there'll be a split here, but at least somebody with that much of clout is, 
It's throwing him a bone, I guess. Uh, no pun intended. Moving on to the <coughs> next esports story, <laughs> that would be uh, Echo Fox. Echo Fox, if you're not familiar, Rick Fox, LA Lakers Hall of Famer, if I'm not mistaken, uh, has started an esports team, league team, Counter Strike team, if I'm not mistaken, Overwatch team, and uh, they just brought on another team uh, member for the Echo Fox team, not for an actual esports team. And his first order, first order of business is to recruit some FGC members. That's getting pretty esports, guys. What do you think, John? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's like you said, it's a it's another step towards that. And I mean, I, I'm excited to see where it goes. At this point, what you said is pretty much all we we have on the table right now. Um, so, I mean, throw in my throw in my information, maybe, and. <laughs> You know, uh, and you saw it was Jace Hall, if you follow him on Twitter, he's the one that put out uh, First Order of Business, Get FGC Team Up and Running. There was a lot of response to that tweet, guys. Uh, everybody from Arturo to people recommending other people. I mean, there was a lot of interest, of course. Now, if you read Dot .esports, you know that one of our reporters, Cyrus Mueller, wrote a story on Echo Fox and coming into esports and their ability to... It's like the next wave of investors that are coming in. Team Echo Fox has uh, investors like from Shaquille O'Neal, A-Rod, all these guys. And they're not jumping in to see how it works out. They're jumping in because they think it's a sure thing. They're connected. They know people in these uh, various industries. So I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I suspect that they know something we don't know about what's about to happen to the FGC. And I'm very eager to see how that rolls out. And I definitely think that the people they're going to be going after aren't necessarily currently unsponsored players. It's going to be the big names. Uh huh. Interesting. I I just find it hard to believe with the caliber of their teams and other games that they're just going to be picking up people for the first shot. Now I could be completely wrong, and maybe they are just looking to just you know start it out in the FGC and see where it goes. But I definitely think they're going to be making you know really big leaps if they're going to try to get in for real. All right, guys, is that enough esports for everybody? This is Dot Esports, of course, but uh, I think even I've had my fill. Let's talk about Texas <laughs> Showdown a little bit. Uh, Although I will note one more thing is leads. that um, Ray, obviously, uh, part of the show before, um, who speaks Korean, was talking about how on Punko's Twitter, he's been talking about how he's having trouble in SF5 and not sure if he wants to continue to play Cami and really being nervous about being sponsored recently. So wow. it's interesting to see how that pressure has affected players so far. That is very interesting. And we'll have to uh, maybe pry into that a little bit more with Punko. But like you finally get your golden ticket and then you're like, oh, I can't deliver? Those are the nerves? You're on the big stage? Well, hopefully he can uh, figure that out because uh, I think a lot of people are fans of Punko, myself included. Texas Showdown. Your boy got ninth. Last week we were saying, what if Donka won it? But I'm very proud to say that you're on the board, man. You got some Capcom Pro Tour points. points. Yeah, that's badass, man. How was your uh, experience? You commentated, you competed. I think you got third in Blaze Blue, if I'm not mistaken. What? But you got third in Blaze Blue, if I'm not mistaken. Not <laughs> oh, uh, I got gotcha. you. Texas Showdown was a great time, as it always has been for me, ever since Javi has taken back over the event. I think it's been ran wonderfully. Um, you get to see, and you know, this sounds surprising maybe for people outside of Texas, but... The Texas cities are hours and hours apart, and oftentimes the Texas players don't even get to play each other. So, like, you know, there'll be a regional in Dallas, and, like, Dallas will be there, and maybe a few people from Austin and Houston, but not everyone. But for Texas Showdown, pretty much everyone in Texas makes it out, and we get some heavy hitters from out of town. So it's definitely the best event the state will ever have to offer in that sense, along with Absolute Battle. So I really like being a part of that, and I enjoyed getting to commentate. I'm not sure people enjoyed it. I hope they did. Um, but uh, I like to give a lot of shout outs to Level Up Live for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and it was Panda. Great be, it was great to be a part of that as, do, as well. Um, guys, did you guys catch any Texas Showdown? Um, I, I actually had to go and, and get it on like the archives and such because I was more focused in on writing stories and, and covering um, RBK. But uh, I definitely went back and, and had to do quite a bit of research on the whole thing because of a, a certain something that went down. Why don't you go ahead and introduce that topic? I mean, we have plenty of nice things to say about uh, uh, about Texas Showdown, or Nicali Showdown, if you want to call it that. <laughs> uh, but uh, there were some complaints, and I actually have the tweet, but I'll let you go ahead and start it. Okay. Well, the, uh, the bulk of things um, came from, I think it started with PR Balrog tweeting out about being disappointed about the way Top 32 Bracket was organized. Now, for those of you that haven't been to a tournament before or you haven't watched the brackets, traditionally how things work is that uh, there, there are you know, a certain amount of pools 
And as someone gets out of a pool, they play the winner of the pool next to them. So pool one plays two, three plays four, five plays six. And that's almost always the way you see it done. And that way you kind of know who you're going to play against. So in PR Rock's case, I think he was next to a certain Vega player. I forget who it was at the moment. <laughs> um, but he, uh, from what I understand, is like, okay, I'm going to play this player. Uh, it was Donka, by the way. And so he goes he goes, and he's like, okay, I'm going to study up on the Vega match because I have tonight, which being Saturday night because Top 32 played out on Sunday. So he, he goes and he studies up Vega all night, gets to uh, Sunday, and they go, oh, um, we went like the NCAA seeding route where pool one is going to play pool 16, two is going to play 15, three is going to play 14, so on and so forth. And... To those that were trying to prepare, like PR Rog, they go, what? I didn't know this. Uh, this is not the way things normally go. And I actually, he, he said he reached out in, in multiple different ways via Twitter, via asking around, and nobody had this information for him. So, um, and, and PR Rog, I'm sure, is not the only one. He's just, you know, a notable player that was vocal about it. So there is a little bit of uh, miscommunication between the TOs and the players, and it, it left a bit of a bad taste in some people's mouths. Now, I often come back to because he wasn't the only one that complained. Uh, Chris G started a match off stream, won the first round of his match, and then they say, stop, go do that on stream. And he's in the middle of a match. Later, the dude, uh, if you want to comment on that. Uh, uh, there's a bunch of different scenarios that were talked about, and you know they all have their own level of which I agree or disagree with them. I think that, and I mean, I interrupted you, sorry, but no, I think good. that the bracket thing was unfortunate but not intentional and they have as john said done this in the past and it, and while it definitely was not advertised enough and i do feel bad for pr rog and i as well was looking through nikali to play versus him you know i ended up getting bodied by him later in losers bracket anyway but it was confusing and i did indeed believe i was gonna be playing against somebody that i wasn't mm -hmm. as for the chris g thing i do believe that was a problem mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is he played a match off stream and at that point, just finish it off there. I mean, I can't understand why on earth, at least if they're going to transfer it to the streams, keep the set count. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't understand well, what was th going th on there that at to all. Me, the question to me is, are you there? The tournament should serve the players first. The stream, although it's a very important part and it helps grow the scene and you would want a Chris G match on stream, the stream has to come second. You can't favor the stream over the player, especially like that, and especially a guy like Chris G. On and that, of that being said... That's not always necessary. And you have to look at your volunteers and see what happens. But in this case, I believe it was somewhat the mistake of a volunteer who didn't speak up and see what was happening. And, you know, the players themselves don't know how much they can argue. And some are willing to argue more than others. Yet again, an unfortunate situation of circumstance. I will say about PR Rog, before we move too far from it, is that he said, yes, I was unhappy about some of these things, but I'll definitely come back. And I mean, everybody is like careful not to just be a jerk about it. I mean, to a degree, I think right. people understand. And one last thing I'll say on the matter is that for the people like Chris G, formerly myself, I've stopped doing it, who enter, you know, five, six, seven, eight events, I think tournaments either have to cap how many events you can enter mm. or make absolutely positive your schedule at completely different times and that you will not get DQ'd because I do believe that that happens way too frequently. And I know that events, and I always bring this up, like Combo Breaker and formerly UFGT, have done a good job making sure that that never happens. And to your point, Chris G got disqualified from his Mortal Kombat Expos. Right. And he was upset about it. He was saying, hey, can I get a refund? Like, this is unfair. Uh, then again, as you mentioned, he entered a lot of games. Yeah, a lot. I think he entered like most of the games there. All right, but let's actually, I mean, we're obviously going to bring this up when we talk to, uh, to Julio. So let's talk about some of the other grand finals briefly uh mortal kombat x was taken by let's see if this replay goes by scar it was taken by scar uh that demolition sony is doing work yeah i mean he's he's been getting second to sonic fox and a whole bunch of majors the last year or so are you implying that he only won because sonic fox was not there i'm not implying that i'm just saying that without sonic fox there i think he's the favorite okay that makes sense uh guilty gear that was a fun one to watch especially because it was in houston and a Houston player won. That was faulty defense. Uh, he took it over Dallas's Oso. Not too many out-of-staters there. Tasty Steve entered and got top eight, but uh, Texas took it. And let's talk about this. Your old stomping ground, Marvel. I don't know if I'd call it a stomping ground, but um, <laughs> yeah, Chris G took it pretty cleanly uh, over Texas. Uh, I think this is his second time doing it. All right. Uh, and of course, in Street Fighter, we had none other than Julio, the man himself, with a little help from his friends, took it. 
Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on that? We're gonna, of course, we're going to ask Julio about the call. But, John, how do you feel about the fact that he took that call uh, in between those sets and grand finals? Um, in my own experiences, uh, every time I, sh I end up on stream, my phone blows up with <laughs> my like hometown guys like either calling or texting to try to tell me what I'm doing wrong and how to make adjustments and stuff. Um, I'm, I can't remember a specific time, but I think I've taken a call while on stream before. Uh, I mean, it, it's, and you know what, it, it played into the viewer's experience. People are loving it. It was hilarious. PR got to react to it. We got a little bit of a, a little bit of a drama there. Like I'm, I'm all for it. There's no rule, at least not yet. that says we can't do things like that. I mean, you want to be, you want to acknowledge your, your, your fellow uh, players and you want to acknowledge the, the tournament and you want to hold things up. But I think it was hilarious and it, it played right into the to the story that like hey he took a call and then he <laughs> you know uh, ended up winning the tournament and such so I'm, I'm all for it as long as it's not hindering the progress of the tournament as long as it's not you know putting people off then then it's fine and I'm glad you know our our daily dot esports Facebook page caters to mainly other esports right or, or larger titles uh, but our boy Ian Barker uh, put a video together about that incident. And the comments were all, that's cheating. How could he do that? That's so offensive. How rude. I'd be so upset. And, of course, coaching is common and accepted and even encouraged in some instances. Um, but from an outside perspective, it was offensive. Is there an argument for that was really out of place, that was rude, that was disrespectful to P.R. Rog? Look, if you had taken it in between, to me, what makes it totally fine is, A, it was short. B, it was in between two sets. Mm -hmm. And I think if someone said, you know, look, I got to go to the bathroom in between two grand final sets, you'd be like, well, that's a little weird, but, you know, go ahead. You got to go. You got to go. Taking a 30 second coaching session from someone that's not there to me isn't a big deal, especially considering, according to sources and for Julio himself, nothing actually happened on that call. It was funny. I thought it looked good and not bad. Um, I'd hope no one took it too seriously. I mean, if he was on there for like, you know, 10 minutes, it'd be one thing, but. Yeah. It was really not a big deal. Well, there you have it, guys. Go ahead, Steve. I, I, I don't think the call itself was a big deal. But I think that really it comes down to the fact that, you know, a lot of people care about coaching. A lot of people don't either dislike coaching, you know, in terms of fighting games, thinking it's, you know, a mental battle between you and your opponent not you and whoever your boys are versus them and whoever their boys are. But really, I I think that for me, I wasn't all that cool with it because you're basically allowing anyone in the country. <laughs> you know, the call itself might not have been a big deal, but I think the precedent it, it leaves uh, if it's allowed at other events is just too big of one for something with two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on the line, I mean, let's remember that we've we're playing for huge money. Here. So would it have been okay if he was there then? Uh, I'm just wondering. I, I, if if your friend is there with you, like I didn't have a problem with uh, with Brent's coaching there because he was there. You know, it, you're allowed to have a coach next to you, uh, either player. It's just when you allow that coach to be at home or, you know, watching the event, talking to people who aren't at the event or might have other information, I think that opens, you know, I think it opens the door to things that we really don't want to go down. Yeah, but I guess if you're going to take a call, it's going to be from the guy that beat him last week. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're going to take somebody's advice. Um, Again, the Texas Showdown replays are on Level Up Live's YouTube channel and on Pandex Gaming's YouTube channel. And for crying out loud, do not rip the streams and putting them <laughs> on your channel, okay? That adds a lot of undue stress to poor Panda who has to go and do all those copyright strikes. So for crying out loud, just support the man and go to his own channel. Could I get one more shout out for Texas Showdown? By all means. Uh, the Killer Instinct Grand Final. That was insane stuff. Uh, it was the first KI World Cup qualifier of the year. Uh, Sleep took it home over base. 
incredible set, uh, two incredible sets, I should say. It went down to the wire in the first set, down to the wire in the reset. Uh, if you have any interest in that game at all, check it out. It, it, it was phenomenal to watch. And one thing I'd like to note about it is it kind of reminds me of the whole Alex Valle, Valle CC from Alpha 2 thing. Because what actually happened in the first set of that grand finals was a glitch was shown on display, which is that Arbiter can be thrown out of standing block stun, which means that you can infin- if he blocks a move standing, you can tick throw for free. Hmm. And so he was losing to this for a while and then switched characters to end up winning the match instead because he realized it was just going to be impossible. That's a shame. He uh, still took it, though. He still took it. Thank goodness. Yeah, I heard in the uh, post-match interview that uh, he wanted to stick with Arbiter, but that, that kept him from doing it. Right. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, Steve. I didn't want to forget it, and I, and I would have if you hadn't brought it up. Guys, uh, we got a little bit of guile action. If Last week, we said on the show, stick around for Capcom Pro Talk later because Combo Fiend is going to be on there, and he's going to be showing off guile. And I was very excited for that. Then, for some reason, Mike Ross ended up getting locked out of the studio. At least that's what he tweeted. <laughs> and we didn't get it. But uh, your boys over at Yahoo Esports put together a little video, and we're going to watch a little bit about this. Uh, this is Michael Martin and Combo Fiend breaking him down. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, on Capcom Pro Talk tonight, they're going to do a make good and have Guile on there. But you're our resident Guile, man. How pumped are you? And uh, are you liking the way he's looking so far, even though you haven't had to put your hands on him yet? As I've said, DreamHack is you know next weekend, not this coming weekend. There's a weak rule for Capcom Pro Tour. I just want him to come out before then so I can learn him and grind him and be allowed to use him at DreamHack. This is definitely who I want to play in at least some capacity. Mm-hmm. Guys, are you excited for Gal? Uh, and or would you like to make a joke about the fact that it's almost the end of the month and we haven't gotten the character yet? <laughs> I think he looks really cool. I like what they've done with him so far. Um, I did a, uh, a bit of an interview with Knuckle Dew earlier, and he's really excited for him. He pointed out that um, he's going to be a defensive character, at least that's what Combo Fiend uh, said, and he might know what he's talking about. But uh, <laughs> the, the, the also, being an SF5 character, you have to have some offensive potential, and I think we've seen that, not only with the fact that, you know, like, this game doesn't have option select crouch checking and things like that. Um, you know, you're, you're going to be able to do a lot more with Guile. His, his, uh, his fierce punches do crush counters and such now. And uh, that V-Trigger, man, with, when he's throwing a million sonic booms and when he does his critical art and it's just this huge, like, 15-hit sonic blast or whatever, uh, sonic hurricane, mm-hmm. uh, he, he looks like he's going to be a lot of fun. He definitely does, but you were making a point earlier to me when we were talking before the show about how he's one of those unique characters that's on the far end of the spectrum and how that relates to the rest of the cast. Yeah. And I think you were comparing him to Fang, if I'm not mistaken. So here's my potential reservation about Kyle. Um, Combo Fiend identified him as the first, uh, I think you said, first true defensive character in Five. And if you recall, when they were first uh, developing the game and such, and it wasn't out yet, they said this is a, a more offensive game. We've made this, so it's not we're not down-backing. In fact, they, they got rid of charged characters for the most part. There's a few charge moves. But Guile's the first fully charged character, which means he's very different than the rest of the cast. And um, recall right, when, right before the game dropped, we were talking on this show about Fang, and I was saying... He's a, he's a very different character. He's totally off to the side. He's not a grappler. He's, he's, he's kind of a zoner, maybe. And, you know, we hadn't really investigated him all that much. But the thing about characters that don't fit the mold with the rest of the cast is that they're usually polarized. They usually go to the very top of the list or the very bottom of the list in terms of how powerful they are. And I don't think that Guile is quite as different as Fang is. And also, we've had like this tried and true Street Fighter history where you have, you know, charge characters and you have offensive characters and such. So Guile's a little less foreign than Fang is, but there is a very real possibility with him being a defensive character in a game of mostly just offensive characters that he might be really strong or really weak. Now, Capcom probably had this in mind the entire time, and, and they've, they've probably taken their precautions. But that's my main reservation, and, and only time will tell. We'll see how people take to him. We'll see how he actually plays once, the, once he's released. But that's kind of in the back of my head after I heard that he's a defensive character. So, see, I, go ahead. what I'm really interested by that part uh, is if you look at, you know, he plays very much like Guile did uh, in 4, 
but it's like Guile Plus. You know, he's got that stationary sonic boom that can set up traps. Uh, he can, you know, do the multiple sonic booms uh, to be more offensive. He's got that crouch walk so he can advance while still holding his down back charge. So, or his down charge, excuse me. Mm-hmm. So I, I look at a player like uh, Knuckle Doo, who was able to make a purely offensive guile or purely defensive guile work uh, in an offensive way in Street Fighter Four, and I'm I'm just interested to see what he can do with Street Fighter Five. I don't think he's going to be so far behind, um, especially since you know no matchups really have been like eight two or nine one yet, and I don't think we're gonna see that necessarily so mm-hmm. i think he he in particular and i think some other guy players are going to make him work and make him work perhaps in a more offensive way than you know we're, we're thinking we may see yeah well there you have it if you want to see more of guile before you get your hands on him when he comes out uh, again you can check out the yahoo esports videos there's an interview and a bunch of gameplay or just stick around and watch on the capcom fighters twitch channel Mike Ross and Capcom uh, Combo Fiend break them down tonight live. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap that up, guys. Thank you very much for joining us on the panel this week. We'll see you next week because we got an interview to get to with the winner of Texas Showdown. John, Steve, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having us. All right, guys. Um, Julio, made a splash. I don't know if everybody out there in the audience knows, but have you heard of the Trinity? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's hilarious. I think it's pretty funny, too. If you don't know what the Trinity is, you're about to talk to one-third of said Trinity, and that is Chris Tatarian, Julio Fuentes, and Brent Franks. Three Kens, three bros. They're really taking it to the next level with that character. Definitely, and I remember I mean, you asked who I thought was like the best unsponsored player the other week, and I said, well, it might well be Julio. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's... Uh, He's done so well across every Street Fighter V tournament so far. Other than getting knocked out at pools in NCR, he got second at Winter Brawl. He got second at another tournament, or at least top eight. And then he obviously won Texas Showdown. So, I mean, as far as results go so far, other than obviously infiltration in Tokido, I mean, he's right up there. Joining us now is none other than the Texas Showdown champion, Julio Fuentes. Julio, thank you so much for joining us, man. What up? Can you guys hear me? We can hear you and we can see you just fine. How you doing, man? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, dude. Um, happy to be on here, guys. I'm pretty tired. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I bet. How was the trip? How was getting back to uh, Cali? It sucks because like <laughs> I got on my plane and like everything's per- everything's going perfect. I had a perfect weekend, all right? I'm winning. I, I got everything I wanted. I get on the plane and like I already scheduled my friend to pick me up and then like they just have like a mechanical problem and they're just like oh it's gonna take like 10 more minutes and i'm like 10 more minutes 10 more minutes all right that's fine i could deal with that and then they're like oh you know what now we have to do paperwork i'm like paperwork seriously the flight got delayed two hours oh no yeah and then keep in mind like i got a buddy of mine picking me up and like he's not happy so like it just made everything more stressful but nonetheless i got home really late and you know woke up for work and on i'm just tired but i'm happy i'm like Getting all this attention on the media, you know? You should really be. Nice. Hey, now that you mentioned that, uh, a little birdie told me that... I'm getting a little bit of an echo. Do you hear that, Will? Um, a yeah, little birdie told me that you guys fight the Trinity, fights over Twitter followers, and that Chris T got a 700 follower bump after winning West Coast Warzone. How'd you make right. that? Oh, so the, the fall... Fo- I haven't looked. Um, <laughs> let me look. I'm at 2067. I, I forgot what I was at. I, I was at like a thousand seven hundred before, so I don't think I made that much. I think it just made like three, four hundred. But um, you but, know, it's but, okay. <laughs> but like, those Lupe actually, tweets, those Lupe tweets count like for fifty, fifty followers per once. <laughs> yeah, no, dude. Like I got a lot of likes. That's for for damn sure. But man, I should I should have kept count at what my 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 <laughs> follower count was at. But I'm I'm really bad at social media, man. Like I'm I'm the absolute worst because uh, I I I sometimes don't feel like saying anything and when i do it'll be like in batches of tweets Mm -hmm. and then like i just won't tweet for a while like i'm like a social media introvert in a way but uh i'm trying to be more active on it like i think if i think if i switch my profile picture to like a real picture of me that would help not that young uh one (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. people just see young and they're like that's not julio or something (laughs) i don't know It, it could be that but uh i think chris definitely has me beat in the follower count though 
Julio, let's For talk sure. a little bit about uh, your Texas showdown. Obviously, you took it. Uh, there was a bit of a moment there, and we'll get to the call here in a second. But how did you feel throughout that tournament before Grand Finals? Uh, I felt chill. Oh, keep in mind, like, the weekend... Uh, I was doing it really good at, at all the majors I've attended, except West Coast Warzone, which was the one right before Texas Showdown. Texas Showdown is the one tournament where I didn't... Or, I'm oh, sorry, uh, West Coast Warzone is the tournament where I didn't even make it out of pools. I played really bad. I lost to Mark Teddy. I lost to Valiant in pools. It's a really good Bison. Really good Nash. Uh, you know, they're, they're both great players. But I just was like, this is not... I'm better than this. Like, I know I have skill, you know? So, like, I just had to do some mental tweaks and, like... I have some good friends right here in, in NorCal, you know, like a lot of the players that I consult with. And it's like, you know, you got to look at them as like the doctor. You know, like you, you go to multiple doctors, get diagnosed, talk about it for hours. So like I didn't play that much at all before Texas Showdown. I just kind of like really, really try to figure out what was wrong with my game. And I, I kind of figured it out and like it was cool. Like I was even telling my friend Mike, I'm like, dude, like I'm feeling pretty good about Texas Showdown. Like, he can quote me on that. Like, I was like, I'm feeling pretty good about it. So, yeah, while I was at Texas Showdown, I was just feeling good the whole way through. I'm just, like, just chill. Like, I got the mindset ready. Like, I know what I'm doing. Just go with the plan. And uh, it worked out. You, you, worked said, out. you said you took time to figure out uh, what you needed to figure out. What did you figure out? Uh, so there's this thing where when I was playing at West Coast Warzone, I felt like every mix-up I did, I felt like they were still, like, I, I felt like every sweet sequence I was busting out was just, like, on default settings. Like, n I can never break out of the, oh, block, tech, block, block, tech, block, tech. Like, you know that feeling when you know your string is just going to get blocked, you know the guy's going to tech, and you just can't break out of it? I felt like I was, in, I was stuck in that mold. And uh, the only way, usually when you're stuck like that, you, it's a good sign to take a break, you know? get rid of the it's like I, I call it clearing your cache like you have to clear your brain's cache and like kind of like how the browser clears mm -hmm. cache and all that anyways um <laughs> so that's what i did that's like my theory right like i just got to take a break so i can play fresh in tournament where i have no habits to to uh pull from i just have nothing but fresh play for that day so that was my strategy and i feel it worked out the best but uh yeah it, it's just a balance you know if you're playing too much you should right before a tournament it might be good for you might be bad but you got to feel it out i know for me it was like it was it was bad so i had to take a break and uh you know when i feel like it i'll grind it up again take a break it's just it's just a balance now getting into specific matchups there was a, a couple a couple matches i was interested to see you go into one of which was facing dark jiwa who had just beaten your boy brent and how did you feel going into that seeing that he obviously had some experience winning in the kenmere yeah, I was seeking vengeance for my boy Brent. Like I was like, I will avenge you, brother. And uh, no, 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 it was fun. Like, like I went up there and I, I don't think too much about the matches that I'm about to play. I'm just gonna play, right? But um, I played Dark Jiwa before at the Foundry, and when he played at the Foundry, he was, he was weird. Like he got to winners finals, I think, but for some reason he just, he just choked really, really hard against me at the Foundry. I'm like, okay. He, he wasn't playing like himself. I can't even, like, that's not even his true potential. Like, he was driving too many things. So when I was playing him at Texas Showdown, I'm like, oh, my goodness. This is going to be the real Jiwa. Like, this is the, the strong one. Like, he's playing on point today. You know, he's playing good footsies and all that. But uh, I was feeling myself pretty, too. Like, I already had the confidence. I'm like, dude, I already beat this guy. And I remember how nervous he got last time I played him. So I'm just going to try to capitalize on that. And like not let him think and like overwhelm him and it kind of worked out you know i pushed him in the corner and like i won you know absolutely so it's, it's nice. i want to remind the audience at home that you too as i mentioned at the top of the show can call in and give julio some tips on how to beat pr balrog or ask him a question <laughs> so again the lines are open and we will hear your question live on the air and julio will hopefully answer it the phone call <laughs> let's talk about that call for a second man while we wait for the calls to come in uh yeah. again I'll, I'll just start here and get your opinion on it some people thought that was rude it was rude to, to pr balrog to do that how do you feel about it it oh it was rude on, on my part you mean yeah like you know to you're to, to yeah, a degree yeah. you're disrespecting eduardo by taking a call yeah. in the middle of you know grand finals all right so uh i'll tell my account of the whole thing sure um after i after i lost right i was just like okay uh the the first thought in my head i have two thoughts right i'm like okay i, I can't beat him up close I either have to play Fireball game or play Nash. 
So immediately we go to character select and I look at Brent and I'm like, Brent, and I told him those exact thoughts. I'm either, I can't beat him up close. I have to be either play Fireball game or I'm going to play Nash. Brent says, no, dude, play Ken. You need to play Ken. Just keep playing Ken. You're just getting hit by stuff. Like, don't go up close. He's punishing all the minus two. I'm like, okay, okay. And he's like, yeah, Chris is calling right now. And I'm like, what? He's like, Chris is calling. And I'm like, <laughs> I look at the phone and like, you see the phone ringing. And I'm like, I just felt the pressure to pick up the call. I'm like, <laughs> okay. And the and as soon as I grab the phone, I'm like, hello. And if you look at the video, you see me like this. And I'm like, hello. And then I hear like, I hear Chris's voice. But I can't make out what he's saying. And then you you see the in the video you see my hand, uh, me putting my finger near near my ear so I can hear it better. And then like I still can't hear him. So then you see me go like this, like dude, what is he saying? I'm like struggling to hear what the hell Chris is saying. And then um, I couldn't hear anything because the by the time I picked up the call, the crowd was just erupting, man. Like they all were just like, oh, the phone call, phone, <laughs> phone. Oh, it's Chris, it's Chris. And like yeah, it was Chris. And I'm just like I know it's Chris. I'm trying to hear what Chris is saying. And, uh, hey, dude, you know what's funny? I was really trying to listen to what he was saying. <laughs> you know, to get his input. Because, uh, you know, if, if it might have helped, it might have not. But I, I genuinely uh, didn't hear anything. The All I heard was, like, screaming, white noise. And I heard, like, three key words. Uh, whiff, no, 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 neutral, no, 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 punish. And then I'm like, I told Chris, like, dude, I can't hear shit. Just text it to Brent. And then I'm like, Brent, just tell Chris to text you whatever he's saying. I'm going to play Fireball game. And then, like... I did my thing, and uh, you know it's pe- people. People really think that um, I, I I got the secret tip, and uh, <laughs> it just I, I I think it's hilarious. You know I I love that the phone call happened because it was a phone call followed up by a three zero, that yeah. it, which makes people go like, what were the magic words in that phone call? Everybody wants to believe that they want to believe that there was an exchange of words that just clicked and just created this 3-0 opportunity it's just like what were those words everyone wants to believe it but i i I have to i have to tell you like there there was no words it was just screaming it was all you (laughs) yeah like the crowd dude that crowd was insanely loud like and uh no it was cool i I love that the phone call happened though like it's really really funny okay funny we have a call for you this call is from eric eric you're on the air uh, hi, uh, I was uh, I was gonna ask Julio. Um, I've been following him since uh, three forty four since three forty four when he played John, and then in three forty five I noticed. I mean, he picked Ken now, but I feel like Ken is the play style is actually kind of different from John. And I was wondering if he, he if he's waiting on a particular DLC character or if he's gonna wait. I mean, he's gonna stick with Ken. Thank you for way. your thank you for your call, uh, Eric. Julio, to yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I thought about that, man. Uh, I always think, like, dude, what if one day Yun just comes out? And like, dude, I, I, I thought about that, and I'm like, okay, what would it, what would have to happen for me to really drop Ken, right? Yun would have to be really good, really cheap, really, really, really cheap, because uh, that's what that's why I played him. He's really cheap, and he, he needs to have the Ganagian. If he doesn't have that, that, that's the thing that attracted him about it uh, to me about him. It was the Ganagian. It was the customs. You know, it wasn't back when I played Third Strike and I picked you, and I didn't know he was top tier. I'm just like, dude, this character can do some crazy ass custom combos. Um, I have to do it myself. You know, so uh, you know he's got to look. He's got to be cool. He's got to be aggressive, and he's got to be good. But uh, if I were to really make a choice, I would probably stick it out with Ken. And but here's why: is because when you play a ground based character, you can relate a lot more to other players. Um, Yoon is a character where you're kind of by yourself in terms of uh, receiving advice because you're playing a character that can bypass footsies really, really easily. And uh, it makes it hard for other players to help you out because they're just like, well, we're not even on the same platform of thinking. You're just a dive kicker. You know, you bypass, literally, you literally bypass footsies if you think about it. So it's kind of hard to get better as a Yoon player. That's why I always tell my friends, I'm like, dude, if I played. If I just played like Ken or Dudley or like some ground-based character from Third Strike from the beginning, I think I've I would have been so much better, so much faster. But uh, you know, I played Yan, and I don't regret anything. He taught me aggressiveness, which I feel like translated pretty well into Ken in Street Fighter V. So like, I still feel like the Yan art, the, the archetype that Yan gave me, is still in Ken. So uh, I feel very comfortable with no. with with Ken. Now I do remember you talking before the tournament about a bit about 
potentially switching to Ryu at some point, and then realizing the Cali similarities to Yoon as well. So does does winning the tournament give you like the assurance that Ken's the right pick, or does Ryu still stick around in your head at all? Okay, so like the characters, I always have these second thoughts. That, yeah, I should play Ryu because I, I you know, I, I'm I play Ryu for fun online with my friends. We take turns online, and I'm just like, I do some pretty cool stuff. I'm like, I'm I'm pairing everything. I just parry everything, and I'm punishing these guys with like optimal combos. I'll do like dungeon unblockables and do jump ins afterwards. And I'm like, I don't think no one does this stuff. Like, I should really play Ryu. But then, Ken is so much cooler. So <laughs> it's, it's so hard. And plus, Ken has the confirm, and he has, like, that pace that I love. And it's hard, but I, I would have considered Ryu. I, actually, I consider Ryu now for, like, the Chun matchup. If I ever have to fight a really, really good Chun, um, you know, when you play a really, really good Chun in the Ken match, you eventually get stripped away. Of, the longer the set goes on, you eventually get stripped away of all your tools. You're going to end up with just Fireball, and and that's it. And I'm like, you know what? If the game's going to get to this point, I might as well play Ryu at that point. If it's just going to be a Fireball game and, like, low forward, I might as well play Ryu. What, what's the point? But um, I'm still picking Ken because, you know, my heart is with Ken right now, and I play best like that. So uh, you probably because, won't see me switching characters. It's not because Lupe Fiasco is also on Team Ken or the Ken Squad? <laughs> That's a bonus, man. Like, L Lupe liking Ken, I don't know, man. I'm just, that's really cool. I hope he comes to a major and, like, chills with me, you know? <laughs> we can go eat lunch, get, play in team tournament, but it's cool that he likes Ken. A lot yeah. of people like Ken. Yeah, but let, let, let's get, let me just get your honest opinion on something. You've been in the scene yes. for a while. It's not like you're an unknown player or anything to that effect. But to have somebody uh -huh. like Lupe Fiasco literally tweeting at you and making up memes where you were calling Obama or something to that effect, uh, if I saw on Twitter correctly... How yeah. does that? How does that make you feel? That Lupe Fiasco is tweeting at you and like so invested in you. Oh, oh, dude, it, it feels so cool because like, you know, when you talk, you try to talk to your friends and family about video game stuff. You they, they can't really relate to you. They're like, oh, we don't know the FGC, we don't know Event Hub. But when you show them Yahoo Esports, you show them ESPN, and you show them Lupe, they're just like, yo, Julio, what what the fuck are you doing? Like that's <laughs> Lupe knows you. Oh, whoa, that's that's interesting. Tell me more. Tell me more. You know. So it's cool. Like now, pe I feel like Lupe is drawing people into the scene. Yeah. So it's really good. It's it's really good because they're like, oh, what's Lupe into? Who's Julio? Who's this? And then people on my end are like, Julio, you 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 know Lupe or Lupe <laughs> knows you? What? It creates like curiosity, and now people are, you know, interested. I guess. But sure. Cool. I want to remind the audience that you can call in if you have any questions for Julio about his Ken, about his future plans. Of course, I could just ask that for you guys. Hey, what are your future plans, Julio? You looking forward to uh, competing in more CPT events? Oh, yeah, man. Um, I'm, I'm definitely trying my best to travel everywhere. And I'm trying to hit the international travel scene like as soon as I can. You know, I'm not trying to go uh, do it in America for a little while and then go international. I'm trying to go international as soon as I can. Like, I feel like the more exposure I can get sooner on, it'll just make me better. Mm -hmm. I just turned in my passport, re my, pa my passport renewal mm -hmm. recently. So I'm trying to make that happen. And, you know, hopefully with the, an upcoming sponsorship or so, like I can really make it happen. Um, so future plans is just keep training, keep up my schedule. Um, I have great training partners. Like literally, I feel like I play with the most talented people in the world. And uh, if I'm just going to keep at it and, see what happens and especially with this win from texas showdown i feel so confident going into the next tournament you know so i hope i can make some people shaky when they sit next to me i hope they're gonna feel the rush down in the nerves and i'm just gonna be taking advantage of that you know so i'm feeling good looking forward to the future events and stuff now is this major win what it's gonna take for you to get sponsored has anyone contacted you in two days have you started outreaching yourself do you think like now is the time that might happen well fortunately fortunately someone name dropped me apparently there's this guy named jace hall mm. who was like trying to find people and he hit me up he's like hey dm me and he's like do you know anything about us and i'm like uh i just know there's some dude named rick fox and you and your warner brothers he's like oh yeah well rick fox kobe shaquille o'neal yada 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 this is that so we're working it out hopefully it works out for the best. Are we going to see uh, Echo Fox Julio? I I hope I hope so. I mean, we'll see. Uh, I might just be Julio forever. You never know. I do think it's super funny 
that like my name is just Julio, and then when I win the major, and I just look at the list, I'm like, oh look, it's just all these handles, all these sponsors, and it's just Julio. <laughs> and I think that's I think that's super funny. So like I might want to keep that, preserve that. You know, I wouldn't mind preserving that. But no, a, a sponsor acronym right before my name would be pretty dope too. I would love that. Talk to me a little bit about the Trinity. Oh man, the Trinity. Hey, for the anybody Trini- who doesn't know, can you just explain that and then before you launch into it? Okay, so for, in case you don't know, I'm from Cali, Chris T is from Cali, and Brent is cool is from Cali. We're all from California, and here's the other part: we all hang out with each other. We love hanging out with each other. These guys are like literally becoming. Uh, they're my brothers. I can actually call them my brothers now. And uh, we're just like, dude, let's all just play Ken, and just why not Trinity? I forgot who it was. Either Brent or Chris that that thought of the name Trinity, but. Uh, how it came to be was literally just like, hey, who are you playing in five? Like, oh, I think I'm going to play Ken. Oh, Brent, you're playing Ken too? Oh, Chris is obviously playing Ken. Oh, we're all cool with each other. Oh, dude, Trinity. You know? <laughs> and then we started realizing, like, a lot of people like it. And I actually, I I have, I think a lot of the the internationals love it too. Um, you know, there, there'd be, like, tweets about, they'd call us the Three Musketeers. They have, like information on us and stuff and i'm just like you know when we chris and brent talk we're just like we can capitalize on this man we can we can really make this into something especially if we're doing good which we are right so it's like i don't know maybe we should get sponsored as the trinity i mean like there's so many ideas like i I feel like esports marketing wise and all that i feel like trinity is a must-have and uh that's more motivation for all of us to keep doing better you know Absolutely. Now, last week, your boy Chris T took it in grand finals mm. over PR Balrog. This last yes. weekend, you took it over PR Balrog in grand finals. Yes. Brent uh, has yet to take it in grand finals over PR Balrog. <laughs> <laughs> First, what do you guys have against PR Balrog? And second, your take on what Brent needs to do. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, what was that first question about Pierre Bauer? What, what I think about him? Uh, what do you guys have against him? Why do you guys keep doing this oh. to him? <laughs> Why do we do this to him? Oh my god! I, I, I was joking about that, and it's like, dude, if he, it might be one of those like Scooby Doo memes, like ah, these these damn <laughs> Trinity players, you stop me again. Like we're joking about that, but no, Eduardo's really cool. I, I totally respect Eduardo. Like you know, when I play him, I'm just like straight face, like I'm not gonna talk shit. I'm just going to play you. I'm going to shake your hand after. You know, I'm, I really respect the guy. Um, I don't think I'm a better player than him. You know, he's accomplished so much more than me. So, like, I'm not just going to go out there and be like, oh, yeah, I'm better than Eduardo. I, I beat him. Nah. He's he's a great player. I just happen to beat him at this tournament. There's many more to go. But he's a cool dude. Like, he comes over here sometimes, plays. He's taught me stuff, too. That's excellent. So, um, and the second part of the question it? was Brent. Uh, will Brent uh, – oh, yeah. what does Brent need to do? Why hasn't he won one yet? Brent, dude. So we have this thing, right? So when we money match, right? I, I, I thought of this like logical thing. So it's the three of us, right? And usually when we money match, we we run the train or the Trinity train, and <laughs> one guy goes up. The first the first member of the Trinity that that fights fights the the opponent at their level one state. Okay, we look at it as like the level one. Um, and then when the second guy goes up. He's he's fighting the heart the warmed up version of the opponent, right? Mm-hmm. So he's fighting the level two version of the guy. And then the third member of the Trinity is gonna always oh, gonna have it the hardest. He's gonna fight the level three version. So uh I'll connect this with the whole like um Brent winning the major stuff, but the idea is the third member of the Trinity will always have it the hardest because uh the guy is super warmed up, and I use that as logic to to make sure I go because sometimes I want to play the money match ahead of time, and I'm like, hey, look, how about I go first, and then you can fight the level three version of him because that's what you want, right? You want to fight the strongest version of your opponent, so let me just go first. And I'm just trying to be a scumbag and, and money match right away. You know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really trying to – I don't care about the level one, too, but we, we joke about that. So anyways, Brent is getting that level three pressure right now. He's getting the – okay, now it's your turn to win the third major, and you have the most pressure that me or Chris had. You're getting way more pressure. So it's just funny. I mean, I joke around about that. He's he, he's getting a lot of pressure. I hope he does it. I hope Brent wins Northwest Majors. That would be cool because uh, social media, you know, that will blow up. Like the Trinity has Trinity <laughs> T. No, yeah, I would love that. That that would be really cool and, and quite poetic. Now, I asked you before the show, 
Will you give my boy Donka a run back? <laughs> yeah, but you got to play my Nash first. Uh oh. Yeah, and that's I fine. Play Nash. Are you guys ready? To... Are you guys ready for a set, Julio? Yeah, uh, yeah. I got, I got my stick. Um, <laughs> I, I really want to play Nash. I love playing Nash. It's so funny. It's just like back in Street Fighter Four. I would do the same thing. I would just be like, I play Yun all the time. But like, if I'm at home, I play Dalsum. If I ever did play online, I play Dalsum. So it's just the way I am, and I like playing Nash. In in my room, you know, just I, I love Nash. That character is truly number one. And, so. and you mentioned that you were considering playing Nash uh, in Grand Finals versus versus uh, Para Balrog. You like him that much? Uh, I do like him a lot. I always hesitate to pick him. I don't think he. But the thing is, like at the end of the day, I don't think he'll make me a better player. But uh, God damn, I want to pick Nash sometimes, man. And if you saw in Grand Finals after after Eduardo made, uh, caused the reset. I put the cursor on Nash. The crowd got excited for a second. Yeah, and, and like, yeah, yeah, they got excited, but obviously I wasn't going to pick Nash. But for a second, I, you know, I joked, about, uh, I joked about it afterwards. I'm like, dude, wouldn't it be cool if, like, I become, wouldn't it be funny if I became, like, the, the fallen angel of the Trinity <laughs> that eventually picked Nash and betrayed the Trinity and, like, oh, it's just hilarious, like, if that happened. But, no, I'm not going to, I'm just playing for fun. Maybe money matches, but uh. So wait, quick question: Are you on your PC or your PS4? Because Donka is gonna send you an invite, uh, depending on which one that is. I think. I'm on, I'm on PC. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, that was the who is this? Who is Odis? Yes, I have the PC account and the PS4 account. My PC account is really bad. Like I, because you know I got my buddies over and I I always love playing online, taking turns. Like it's just way more fun. You know, you get more pressure. You put everyone in the clutch seat. Like what I'll do is I'll have two friends next to me, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll play first round. Uh, second friend might lose the uh, second round, and then the third friend has to play in the clutch round. And then the other two guys will just observe the third guy playing. And uh, I don't know. I feel like it's a really fun way to practice. It's uh, and it's more involved. Everyone has fun, and it's not too serious. You know, so. I have no points. I could easily get to platinum, but like, god damn it! Like when we play Ryu online, we just get bodied sometimes. So it's fine. Hey, send me an invite. Yeah, he's I'm sending. sending it. Oh, no, I no. sent to the wrong one. I was yeah, he sent it. to the wrong one. Now, Julio, quick question: This whole idea of teams. We see the the Street Fighter Five crash and uh, some renewed interest and excitement around three man teams or three player teams, I should say. Uh, it sounds like you already have one of those. Well, and I want to introduce another thing. Go which ahead. is that a lot of three-man teams don't let you use the same character. Oh. And this famously happened in final round where my yeah. team beat the Trinity. Uh -oh. who, yeah. was playing, <laughs> who was playing uh, non-Ken characters. Oh, my goodness. I remember that. Yeah, that, that was hilarious. When we, I, you know, it's funny. Like, I'm, I'm surprised neither me, Chris, or Brent prepared for that. Like, we were the very – as soon as pool started or for the team tournament started and we were going up, we're like, wait, what? We can't, we can't play Ken, Ken, Ken? And they're like, no, of course not. Did you not read the rules? And I'm like, Chris Brent, did you guys not read the rules? <laughs> <laughs> just like, you know, like, I just, I think we all assumed that, like, yeah, Trinity, we're all gonna do Ken, 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 and we just didn't want to believe that nothing was gonna stop us. And then, boom, we find out we can't pick three Kens at final round. Who did you get the request? The the invite? Uh, let me look. Lone Star thinking. Gamer. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. <sighs> okay, let's do this. <laughs> Julio, you mentioned yes. that you were a little bit tired. That uh... no. oh no, I'm I'm awake right now. No okay. excuses. No option selects. No, no, no option selects. I'm the conversation woke me up. So, so if he gets through your Nash, you're gonna bring out your Ken? Oh, absolutely. But he has to be my Nash. Ooh, All right, first to three with my Nash. Okay. I'm a little nervous about this. I almost want to pick Alex because I hate fireball characters. I'm no, literally no, 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 pick pick Vega. I'll pick Vega. Pick Vega, pick Vega. I really hate fireball matchups with Vega. I'm waiting so badly for Guile. Oh man, I feel uncomfortable throwing fireballs against Vega because, like, the, I feel like that that slide's always just gonna cut me off. All right, guys, uh, I want to thank everybody who called in. Uh, I think it was just Eric, but thank you, Eric. Shout outs to Eric. Everybody, please in the chat, give a shout out to Eric for calling in. Um, yeah, I hope you don't teleport. I hope you don't teleport. I hope the same thing, man. I play. Yeah, it. Let's not teleport around. You know, the uh, idea of these sets is to keep it casual, of course. And uh, for if you guys oh. could be kind enough for our audience to give them a heads up on what you're thinking, what the game plan is, what you're experiencing. Uh, what am I thinking with Nash right now? 
In general, sure. If you can narrate while you play, that'd be great. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I could talk about... You know, I'm pretty good at talking while I'm playing. I do it a lot. Oh, shit. Okay, okay. I just gotta pop the V trigger eventually. Oh, God. Okay, okay. Oh, this is bad. Jump, 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 jump. Oh, damn. Chad, who do you guys like? That oh! Throw a lot of damage. What the heck? God, all right, all right. So when you bring out your can here in a second. <laughs> if, if, he, if he closes out. Oh, okay. the low pro. Oh, I thought you were going to throw a fireball. Oh, you crazy. You're I crazy. thought you were going to throw a fireball. Uh. People oh. are saying that they like Ken versus Claw. Now, this is not uh, a run back exactly yet because you're not picking Ken. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. No. I should be able to punish that. Man. A Infinity says Donka's gonna win because he's a cutie. Nice, man. Oh, oh my god. Why does that do so much? God damn. I thought Vegas commander 180, was... dog! <laughs> the EX bad. one does a lot more than the regular. Okay, okay. Yeah, because his, re his regular command grabs are pretty bad. Or yeah, not that strong. The regular ones are less range and way less damage. It's... I typically don't use them very often. Let's go. Let's go. Hmm. Does anybody in the chat have any questions for either Donka or Julio? I'd be happy to ask them. Yeah, ask me some shit. Diego Umejuarez says Donka's pretty good. So you're fuzzy jumping there, right? Uh, yeah, I'm just doing the, the OS. Oh, shimmy. Oh, oh bazooka -nee. I love that move. That move needs to be used more. It's kind of hard for me to blow up the OS, but I, I have ways. Let's see if I can pull it out. Uh, Julio, we have a question for you. Yes. Would you quit your job if Street Fighter Five if you got sponsored for Street Fighter Five? Dude, all right. So I thought about that. Like, I, so I, I feel like I need a bounce. I need, to, I need to do something outside of Street Fighter to make myself feel good, right? Oh, that should have comboed. Um, what, what do you mean by that? So I was thinking, like, right now, yeah, I work full time, oh, and nice. uh, if I can get like a little bit of salary, because I, what I want to do is like, I, I kind of want to do a little bit of freelancing on the side, just so I can keep up my career skill, you know? Sure. Oh, I missed the combo. Oh shit, hold on. So, I'm thinking, um, get a little bit of salary and then work on my own schedule, like kind of like start my own business, freelancing, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I would live comfortably. As long as I could pay rent and get my flights and hotel covered, I would rather do that because I would live comfortably and be able to like self-study, you know? I, I, I love studying what I want, mm -hmm. when I want. But uh, I need free time for that. So yeah, I, I, w I wouldn't really quit. I would uh, partially quit. I would I would be working on something outside of Street Fighter. I wouldn't just play Street Fighter 100%. Well, there you go. That answers that question. Uh, Julio, we have another question for you. And this is, did you watch any of Rebel Kuben Day? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, when I was in my room, I was watching it. Uh, but uh, I, I didn't watch much. I heard Big Bird plays fifth. He well, did really well, good. That, that, that was actually the question. Oh my God. How do you feel about Big Bird? Uh, he's cool. I mean, like, he, I know he's a nice guy. I just have, like, a bad... Oh, come on. Oh, die. Uh, it's just that one time I read a tweet. He's like, I don't understand Julio's meter, or, or meter decisions at all. 
or meter management decisions. I'm like, screw you, Big Bird. <laughs> you know, like because you're both Kens, right? In, in five. But uh, he's a cool guy. Like I know if I met him, like we'd be chill. Um, oh. He was actually on the show, and he was a really nice guy. Yeah, yeah, he looks like a nice guy. Like, oh, are you gonna? Are you are you the type of Vega that slides in in the clutch? <laughs> We're about to find out. Oh, oh it's up Vega that oh. dash up command grabs in the clutch. <laughs> You're not a sliding Vega. Are you the type of dude who doesn't throw fireballs when he's about to lose? <laughs> oh, it's Vegas, man. They just traumatized me that slide. You know, there were some tweets during Texas Showdown Top 8. Um, nice. In, in the general, uh, the, the, the paraphrasing this tweet, if I'm not mistaken, it was from Chris G, saying something to the effect of the amount of YOLO play that I'm seeing is turning me off. Um, I guess some people yeah. would describe your play as, as YOLO. Do you think that's fair to say? Um... I don't think people know that like it's calculated YOLO. You yeah you you play in, you play best when you fight instinctual. I'm not here to think when I fight. I'm here to fight. You know, like if you had a DP in real life, you're not gonna use it against the the guy that's beating you up. Really like no nah, man. Like I trust my instincts and my DPs landed and I could I guarantee you Eduardo would say the same thing because all of his DPs landed. Um, Night, Night Scribe oh, is asking dirty. about BJ and Change and PR Rog, but, uh, and who has the better Nikali, but I'm just going to open it up. Who do you think has the best Nikali in the scene right now? Oh, <laughs> uh, best Nikali, I mean, like, that's hard to say because I can go by tournament results and I could go by, like, personal preference. Um, uh, that's a tough oh, question. Oh, come on, that was a read. Because I can't even think of what Nikali's exists right now. Because I'm, I'm fighting Donkey and stuff, and I really want to beat up Donkey. Oh. <laughs> Die, Donkey. How did that hit me? That's supposed to crop uh, that. Oh. oh, that's tech from the from your Vega Tech video. <laughs> After the first hit of the EX Somersault, Shit. you can view reversal and get a punish. Oh, what the hell? Sir Trump, Trump, Trump. Snow Villers says, "How do you deal with a character crisis?" Oh my goodness! Oh my god! I can't. Oh my goodness! Why did I do two low jabs? Um, what about the character crisis? Yeah, how, how, how do you deal with a character crisis? That was the question. Oh! Uh, the the character crisis of Ken and Yoon, you mean? Uh, or, or, or a general character crisis? Yeah. Uh, so for general, okay, I I actually have some advice on this because uh. Huda Man is in like a character crisis, I feel. And uh, you guys know Huda Man, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Honda player from SF4. Super good defensive, really good defensive player, right? And I'm just like, dude, I feel like people, he was saying like, oh, what character should I play? Nobody suggested Nash. And I'm just like, you got to look at your archetype. What is your archetype? And his archetype is keep away defense, really annoying to get in. And I'm like, those are, that's what his Honda was, you know? And uh, Nash is like, the closest thing to that, you know? Really annoying, hard to get in on, and uh, defensive overall. So I feel like when you're in a character crisis, just look, just ask yourself, like, what is your 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 archetype? What, who are you really inside? Oh, shit. Take that. Yeah, I hope that helps. Um, yeah, if you're in a character crisis, you really just got to look. Like, what kind of person are you? Are you an aggressive person? Or are you a defensive person? That's like the first... The first clue. Uh-oh. Okay, okay, this is, this is hard. I'll stop asking you questions for a sec here. Hmm. Nice. I figured out how to use uh, Nash's roundhouse. It's for people that want to jump. And, and, and go for that cross up because people like to jump in on Nash right at that cross up sweet spot. So you do this to to stop him. Oh my goodness, the super. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm cool with that. <clears throat> What's the score, Donka? It's two on me. Uh, people in the chat are uh, suggesting you uh, <clears throat> take the call, Julio. Oh, I'll take a call. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean uh, that you need Chris T right now in meme form. Uh. Oh, 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 take the call. Oh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, let me call him, Chris. Let me get him on Skype. Oh, come at me. Come at me. Really? Even that one?
Oh, nice. Yes. I got faked out. You did the walk back, and I wanted to slide so bad. Yeah, you Vegas and your goddamn slides, man. Oh. Oh, God, really? Crap. Oh, this is fucked up. Alright, good games, good games, good games. You, you beat me. What do you have to say? Uh, I mean, uh, keep in mind that I had beating a dude for you. Beating <laughs> a, like, literally, I had all the motivation because beating a dude's sub character while he's talking on the phone means nothing. But now I get the no. meat. Now I get the meat. Yeah. Now I'm going to remind it, it, it you. Means... <laughs> Go ahead, Julio. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, 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 what do you guys want to do? You want to play my Ken? I want to play your Ken. Because this, I have a, like, this isn't a vendetta. This is like literally. I've gotten bodied by Julio, Brent, and Christy. I've played a lot of money matches in this game. I'm trying to do my own. I win the vast majority of them. But Julio, uh -huh. Brent, and Christy own my soul. <laughs> in tournament, Dude. at Texas Showdown, I, mean, I was gunning to do really well, and I lost to Julio, and I lost to PR Rog. And Julio bodied me. And, I'll and I need to learn this matchup. <laughs> I will like travel the world to play these three just to learn how to beat it. Oh, my God. All right, all right. Let me get that. That can go in. Where is he? Julio, last week. Uh, I think this matchup's hard. Christy, I'm apparently the <laughs> Christy beat Donka last last week. Wait, who who beat Daigo? No, no, Chris no. Christy beat me with his Ken. So we'll see if. Uh, oh. But Julio yeah, yeah. has always given me the toughest time uh -oh. of the three of them. Uh oh. Julio. Yeah, you know you haven't been. Yeah, you haven't been uh, you, uh, fortunate enough to to beat the Kens lately. <laughs> Just uh, you, you have troubles at this match for sure. But you know we're here to learn. Maybe you could learn something from this. I guess you just, yeah, I don't know. Because I know when I started off, this match was a bitch. And, like, I played it a lot because Kelvin played it. But uh, I don't know. I still, I don't even know if it's bad anymore. Or I don't know if it's just me being very comfortable with the bad matchup. I don't know. Well, but the neutral is, is just pretty in it. Yeah, it's favorite. definitely in Vegas' favor. The biggest problem is obviously once you get in. Um, at Texas Showdown, I got shimmied on every single defensive situation. I need to make sure I can do something about that. Okay. Oh, here we go. Show you. There we go. Okay, so we're on a match. Nice. Apple Sauce says you gonna nice. learn today, Donka. Donkey. Donkey. Oh. Donkey Shane. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm not even bothering. Okay, so that's uh -oh. another. Oh my god! That's not it, is it? Oh. Oh my god! Jump! Do the, the yeah. Hell yeah! Oh, okay, okay. I've never seen that. Is that like before. almost a frame trap in the corner or what? It's it's only minus one. So if he tries to throw, I'll actually beat him with a jab. If he had just jabbed, we would have traded. Ken doesn't have a three frame move, so it's hard for him to actually. Well, he does. He could Tatsu. Uh. He could have light kicked Tatsu. That's the Woo! only thing he could have done to oof, avoid. Oof. Uh, I'm gonna try to go for the advanced combo. Go for the advanced combo. I can't. It's too hard. Online. Oh it's well, hard. I missed the not advanced combo, so it's all right. Oh, oh, that's it. That's that's how you do that. Fake? Yeah. Oh, that's a fake setup? Well, I can. I, I, so now I have to block string it. Now I have to block string it if you're going to DP. Oh, what the heck? I didn't know I could interrupt right there. If I. Oh, nice. Okay. Shit, shit. Well, I'm not Charlie, goddammit. <laughs> Oh. Oh my god, I tried to anti-air it. But I caught the recovery. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna assume that was an air tattoo. Oh god. Oh, I should have pressed it. Oh no! Here we go again! 
Oh, oh I look for that overhead. That. Take that. That's the okie doke so bad. Yeah, this is not bad. You're not, you're not, you're not like rollbacking all over the place. So it's, it's, it's enjoyable. Julio, what did you do there at the end? Uh, Donka was expecting an overhead. Obviously, you went for the low. Uh, you had that read. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, I was just like, I, I did overhead every other match. So I'm like, I gotta do it. I gotta do a fake one now. I love, I love playing the the fake thunderkick game, man. Once I can play the fake thunderkick game, I'm just having like that much more fun. Not again, no. Nice punish. Some real Street Fighter here, guys. It is a first to three perfectly incomplete. This is the second first to three. The first one was Dante's Vega versus Julio's uh, Nash. Uh, oh, man. Nice. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's nice. But take that. Oh, what take the heck? Take what, dog? Where's my DP? What are we taking? Hey, seriously though, if you think now would be a good time, I'll tell Chris to give you a ring and uh, maybe he can give some. Man, that's gonna be the thing now. Call Christy, <laughs> Julio. Call Christy. You know what I have to do to set the balance? I had, I need to put Christy in a grand finals and then me call him. <laughs> then uh, I don't know. That'd be cool. Got you. That's that confirm you're talking about that you love so much with Ken, right? Yes. Finally, he doesn't shimmy me. I get thrown. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ken shimmy is the best. He does like, it. Yeah, it's too good. But Nash's shimmy is pretty good too. He just dashes up and holds back, and then uh, it's there. It's like he can do a shimmy out of the neutral like so easily. Julio, wake up, sure you wants to know. Who has the best anti-air dragon punches out of the Trinity? Anti-air DPs. I mean, oh man, Chris, you guys... Chris, I think, is the hardest because he's the, the old Shoto player. Yeah, Chris, he should be pretty good at doing it. But um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm confident in my anti-air, but it's not something I'm conscious of. So that question is too hard to answer. Who's the best Ken out of you three? Uh, I mean, it should it should be Chris. He definitely throws better fireballs than me, and uh, he moves with Ken better than I do. But it's okay. I feel like over time, I'll just uh, get better with Ken. Because uh, playing a Shoto, for, going from you to Shoto is uh, different, you know? I gotta make a comeback. God damn. I'm trying so hard to just do this, this combo, man. What's the score right now? 1-1? One, 1-1. One? One, one. Donka's on a mission. Well, it's really no, I mean, Tulio is definitely a better player to me this game, but like, the way I oh. lost the Texas Showdown was like a wake-up call to the way that my bad habits manifest, which is that I do tend to throw tech when people dash at me. Mm. I saw it. I oh, played man. it in slow-mo. Yeah, <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. Let's go, let's go. I haven't actually played since Showdown, but I thought about it. Here come the DPs. Oh, you're pretty good at blocking. Oh, you know about the, the run. Nice. I missed that. No. Oof. Oh, it makes sense. <laughs> oh, my God, that wow. kick. 
Not a bad overhead. The kick's too real, dog. Okay. Oh, there we go. Corner. Yeah. How did that not kick you? Oh, you man. I missed one myself. Kind of scary fighting a claw with like super. OMG Blaze One asks, when Vegas claw gets oh, knocked off. Oh shit! The counter poke is too real. When does he get it back? The next round. Oh, oh no! Oh, my down strong didn't oh, come out. Sick. <laughs> Where's my down strong? Oh my god, that was sick. The zoom up. Yeah, I, I like, you know, sometimes you kill people and you pop the V trigger as soon as the KO happens and you just see like all these cool effects. <laughs> that's kind of what just happened right there. It looks super cool. This game looks beautiful, that's all I'm saying. It is a great looking game. Yeah. Right. Except for that Ken face. And character select. Yeah, the, I, I actually uh. think they're, they might fix that. Like, they have to, right? So much public uh, disapproval. Oh boy. We're about to get some public disapproval here. Oh goodness. Uh, oh, damn, my perfect. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Um, uh, we, uh, we had a question, Julio, about uh, Ken's bad matchups. Does he have any? Oh, yes, dude. Let me tell you the, the three at the top of my head. It's Nash, Chun, and Karen. Mm. Easy, easy. And then right below that is Vega. I I, just, I don't know. I, I've really never felt that. I've never seen a Vega player take out any of the good Kens. So I, I'm not sure where that comes from. Oh, man. It, it is mostly from the beginning, that's all. Like, we all struggled against Vega in the beginning. We're just like... Even Chris and Bram would be like, that is like a 10-0 match. Like, I think we're only good at this matchup now because we went through so much struggle. Oh, come on. Come on, oh, Mike. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> You're not gonna slide. You're not one of those slide Vegas. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god, I thought you were looking for the slide and not the jump. He psyched so, me out in real life. Alright, good games, man. Oh, that was fun, dude. That was fun. Julio. Yeah, the, yeah, go ahead, Julio. You got the you have the floor. Oh no, I was gonna say there's two types of Vegas, like the the V trigger out of nowhere Vegas and the the I'm gonna sweep out of nowhere Vegas. And uh you know, you're, you're not really neither. You're, you're a smart Vega player. Julio, what's next for you, buddy, before we let you go? What's next for me? Uh, Northwest Majors is coming up, so I got to, like, prepare for that. I'm probably going to throw a session at my house tomorrow, invite everyone, and then uh, maybe go to the Foundry, but I don't know. I don't know, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm really scared of getting burnt out and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, keep it up. Same schedule. Excellent, you know, Julio. Um, like haircut or something. Congratulations again on your Texas Showdown win. Uh, it was well earned. Thank and, you, man. And thank you for coming on the show, man. I hope that uh, soon you'll be announcing a, a sponsor, or that works out for you. Dude, I hope so, man. Like, <laughs> hopefully, good things happen. You guys will see more of me. I'm gonna try to stream more too. Uh, just F5 for everyone. Like, I streamed once. I'm trying to find time to keep streaming, so I'll, I'll find something consistent. That's part of that package these days, right? If you want to be marketable, you need to be uh, friendly, yeah. accessible on social media. You got to change your picture from Yoon to uh, your real face, <laughs> and I mean, yeah. you'll, be, you'll have it made. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, I got to do all that, but we'll see. No, I, I'm gonna be doing stuff though. You're you're, you're gonna be seeing my face a lot more. There you go. I Julio, promise. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it, man. Thanks for interviewing me, guys. All, all right. right, later, Efren. Cool. Efren. And, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, dude, you got it. I'll see you guys later. I'm gonna hang up now. Thanks, man. Bye. Appreciate it. Uh, f how'd you feel about that set? Uh, who was really, really good. I mean, um, at the beginning of the the Nash Vega matchup, clearly he just doesn't have much experience with. Probably he does not main Nash. I'm mm -hmm. sure he hasn't put as much time into that. He knew a couple cool things, but the Ken matchups really what I want to talk about and. The first games were very back and forth. The first two he took the first one, I took the second one. 
And then he just started throwing more light punch fireballs the same way he beat P.R. Rock. And I don't think he acknowledges how good his fireball game is. And when he slows it down, once he gets in once, it's just as if he was rushing down the whole time. And that's definitely what Isa came to. And it was it was a, a wake-up call to how I have to approach the matchup, which is I have to be more aggressive and I have to walk into the fireballs and block them and not let them throw them full screen. Versus Julio. Versus Julio and versus uh, fireball characters in general. I am bad. Versus fireball characters. And I think a lot of that's because I come from Marvel and anime games where I can air dash over them and fly around them. And generally, there's a lot of options to get through fireballs. Whereas Vega's only one is his V-Skill and his Super. And his Super is not very well ranged for it. And his V-Skill doesn't work for his Ken's Light Punch Fireball where he'll actually just end up getting hit even if he tries it. So You never wanted to bust out your uh, Alex in that set? I did, but he, t- he told me to pick Vega, so I picked Vega. There you go. I- I'm hoping that... Traditionally, Guile does very well versus fireball characters. So if I can't learn it with Vega, I'll try to beat it with Guile. But I mean, in all honesty, Julio is definitely a better player than me right now. So, well, that's big of you to learn. Shout out to Julio for being on the show. Now, before we wrap up the show, I want to mention one last thing, and that's a shout out to, and we talked about it earlier, to the Level Up crew for letting us be a part of their broadcast. Uh, it's exciting that we get an opportunity to do stuff like that. Uh, I want to remind everybody that it was Panda who invited us to do that first. Yes, for sure. And we did it with Panda a couple times, and he helped us pioneer and iron that stuff out, and we're still getting better as we go. But, you know, it feels good, and I'm going to be completely honest, it feels good when people that I look up to and that I've been following in the scene, like Alex and Panda, ask us to be a part of it or allow us to be a part of it. It means a lot to me in particular. And And on that note, I would like to mention that during my commentary, I mistakenly said (laughs) that Julio lived with uh, BJ Unchained and Kelvin at the Pandora House. That is not true. He does live with uh, Kelvin and BJ Unchained. Pandora House is a separate organization with like LPN and a few other guys. And, uh, you know, Crack Fiend will actually be a dream hack. And I really apologize to those guys. Pandora House is a wonderful group of guys, and I totally made a mistake. That's all on me. There you go. Corrected. Mark it off the list. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. The Best of Three will be here next week.